What is going on YouTube, this is Sam from Team Zyrex right here and today guys I'm coming at you with the deck profile you guys have all been waiting for. You guys have highly requested this deck since yesterday I posted my Fusion Enforcers booster box opening. You guys have been asking me, Sam, where are your Eidolon deck profile? Where is your Invoke deck profile? And I'm sorry guys, it took me you know a day or so to get all the cards to the deck because you guys all know I hate proxying. So I try to get you guys all the cards uh, in real life as much as possible so that way that I can uh, showcase you guys a good quality Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile. Anyway guys, hopefully you guys enjoy this deck profile this archetype is amazing this uh, archetype is called the invoked slash invokers but uh, definitely in the ocg name definitely sounds way smoother as they were to call it idolons in the ocg but anyway guys hopefully you guys are in this deck profile today i'll be profiling you guys in my idolon win witches artifact deck profile this deck profile is absolutely amazing and it's super beast because it's super anti-meta and uh it has a lot of you know uh, summoning mechanics such as synchros and uh fusion which is really awesome so that way that you don't entirely die to two-dimensional barrier first turn depending on the cards that you have in your hand so this deck is just a very anti-meta deck you play cards like scythe and sanctum so basically lock down the extra deck and you there's a lot of things you can do with this deck and it's crazy guys so i'll explain to you guys all my card choices as i progress to the deck profile and by the way guys i've been playtesting this deck for quite some time and uh this is my by far my best list so uh if you guys definitely want to incorporate your own text and different card choices that you guys want to play in your own deck make sure you guys do that because this is just my list on what i like to play for the deck so just use my deck list as a guide on what you guys can play in the deck but anyway guys Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and without further ado guys, let's get started with this deck profile I'll start with the monster spell and traps and go into side deck and also go into the extra deck And I'll basically explain to you guys all what all these cards does and uh, the reason why I play them as well And for those of you who are just here to net deck the deck make sure you guys check out the link in the description box below Not link well check out the description box below for the deck list of this deck because this profile is uh, Meant for those of, uh, of you who do not uh, know how to play the deck and who wants to get started with the deck and who wants to learn in depth about on what the card does so uh, for those of you who are competitive and just want to net deck the deck, make sure you guys just check out the, the description box below for the deck list of this deck. Anyway, guys, let's start with the deck profile real quick. Start with the monsters you want to play, of course, Triple Alistair, uh, the Invoker. This card is uh, a must-off to play triple copies of the deck. This card is absolutely amazing. For those of you who do not know what Alistair does, is that basically during either player's uh, turn, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one fusion or monster you control. It gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of this turn. So basically, it's kind of like a Kalut, the Moon Shadow for the uh, you know fusion monsters on the, that you have on the field. And a really, really good thing about this deck is that uh, it can target any fusion monster it doesn't have to be only invoked monster but so for the purpose of the deck profile this whole profile is going to be you know the invoked arch type of course so you're going to target your uh, invoked monsters and they basically gain a thousand attack which is absolutely amazing and the secondary effect is really important because is because if this card is normal summon or flip summon you can add one invocation from your deck to your hand so this card basically is your searcher for your fusion spell so you definitely must play triple copies of this card uh in your deck so triple copies of alistair uh the invoker really really important guys not much to explain there it's triple Alistair. Next off to the Windwitch uh, engine, you want to play, of course, triple Windwitch Ice Bell. Uh, for those of you guys who did not pick this card up, wow, they were cheap. They were like $7 a piece USD, and now I believe they're like, you know, uh, $14 USD or something. So it just doubled up in price. This card is very expensive right now. But this card is uh, the main starter card of the deck. Helps you go first turn Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And especially, uh, you know, to accompany the Ice Bell, you want to play uh, double Glass Bell and one uh, Winter Bell. This is definitely the correct ratio because you don't want to... Um, I draw multiple copies of, of course, uh, uh, Glass Bell and also especially Snow Bell. What you want to see in your first turn opening hand is definitely uh, Ice Bell as uh, soon as possible. So that way that you get a first turn Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. And you guys all know the combo. If you want to open up Ice Bell, you basically have Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon first turn, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. Snow Bell is really good because any Synchro that, uh, any basically Wind Synchro that you special summon off this card uh, cannot be destroyed by uh, card effects. Well, yeah, any Wind Synchro monster that will summon using this card uh, as single material, it cannot be destroyed by card effects. So cards like Slum would definitely uh, cannot destroy your crystal wing which is re which is really really powerful so you basically bring out a first turn crystal wing synchro dragon that is um cannot be destroyed by your uh your opponent card effect which is really amazing and crystal wing basically again against the zodiac matchup is a very powerful card because it can, it can basically negate the dryden uh, which is very very strong so uh snowbell is definitely uh, one of the good cards that helps you make crystal wing and uh and it's the reason why it's on uh it cannot be destroyed by your opponent card effects so uh snow bell is really good and glass bell is really great as well uh playing multiple copies of glass bell uh I it is good but not playing three copies uh two copies is definitely the optimal number because if you don't win up ice bell you can basically just uh, normal summon uh, glass bell search up the ice bell and then if, uh, if of course uh this card goes to the graveyard you can basically freely special summon the ice bell uh on the field then bring out this uh, the second ice uh gra glass bell and then search up the winter bell and basically do your combos to make crystal wing from there uh so definitely the three to one ratio is definitely uh the right amount uh, in my personal opinion and it's very standard as well so here is your uh you know 
you know, Alistair and of course your wind engine and, you know, making, making uh, Rage In is just very powerful as well because it's a Book of Moon and Book of Moon cards are really good against the Zodiac matchup. And this deck is overall really good matchup against the, the Zodiac match because, uh, basically Zo Zodiacs, they have one summon. So you want to normal summon the rat. As soon as the normal summon the rat, you just Book of Moon the rat and then basically the turn is over unless they got cards like Barrage or things like that. So that's when it's uh, very unfortunate. So, uh, when, when you make Rage In, it's just really, really good against that matchup. So, and these, uh, wind monsters, the wind which, uh, adds to the attribute of wind so you can help make Regen. so yeah now off to the light monsters uh triple artifact scythe this card is really really amazing and it's really good with sanctum you guys don't know what scythe does and the reason why i play triple copies of scythe and one more attack more attack is really standard you guys don't know what more attack does but these cards are light monsters so they aren't technically dead in your hand because uh you can fuse something into uh makaba right here makaba is one of the best uh fusion monsters in the deck because it is essentially your ultimate providence uh which is really really powerful and i'll explain to you guys this card once i go through the fusion but anyway guys playing triple copies of scythe it does not it's essentially not dead at all uh, a lot of people are actually playing Twin Twisters this format, but since the release of this deck, a lot of people are going to be converting to uh, Cosmic Cyclones. But anyway, so most of the, uh, most of the time you're going to be using this card. If you have multiple copies of this card in your hand, you can basically, um, what is it? Uh, use the fusion spell to, uh, send this card to the graveyard. And of course, the Alistair, uh, banish the Alistair to basically special the Macabre first turn to send these cards to the graveyard is really good because in my version, I do play with Call of the Haunted. So you can, uh, interact, uh, this card really, really well with Call of the Haunted, uh, on your field to revive this card from the graveyard. So that way that it locks your opponent from activating, uh, from accessing i mean uh the extra deck uh during uh their turn so scythe is, and more attack which is a very good uh anti matter card right now basically stop the cards uh basically stops uh inter interrupts a lot of plays and scythe overall just stops uh the entire turn especially against the zodiac matchup so scythe is just really really good so uh, that's pretty much it for your artifact engine out uh, your hand traps double gold soldier really good against the zodiac matchup as well and and a really good thing the reason why it's good in this deck is because it's a light um so it's also another target for your invoked Makaba as well. And last but not least, you play double maxi to round off our um, monster lineup. And this is pretty much it for the monsters. Monsters are actually very, very standard. Uh, and I've been playing this monster lineup for quite some time. And it's been, uh, you know, working really, really well. And uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are going to ba basically be having uh, the standard monster lineup as well. Uh, so yes. So this is pretty good. And the really good thing I, I like about this deck is that uh, it has, as I said before, it has two summoning mechanics. Uh, it has a, it gives you access to uh, synchro summoning if you open up... Um, of course, cards like uh, Ice Bell, so if they activate a D barrier, you can call Synchro. So basically, that stops you from going to Crystal Wing uh, for the turn. And then, but uh, if it stops you from Synchro Wing, uh, you can go into Alistair Summon and then go into your Fusion Summon, which is still very, very strong. So uh, yeah, that's why I, I really like about this deck because it doesn't entirely lose to a Dimensional Barrier. Uh, so that's pretty much for the monsters. Off to your, uh, your spell traps, uh, spell lineup. I mean, uh, triple uh, Magical Meltdown card is really amazing. Searches up your uh, Alistair, which is really, really strong. You want to see Alistair in your opening hand as much as possible, and uh, when this card is activated, you can add one Alistair, uh, the Invoker from your deck to your hand. And the activation of your cards and effects that include the effect of Fusion Summoning. A Fusion Monster cannot be negated, so cards like Solemn Warning can basically not uh, negate uh, your uh, Fusion Spell, which is really, really strong. And the secondary effect is really good because uh, as well, because also your opponent cards and effects cannot be activated when that monster is Fusion Summoned this way. So cards like Bombless Trap Hole, uh, what's it called, uh, Floodgate Trap Hole, all those basically cards like Tarantula Tribute and things like that will not work uh, once Magical uh, Meltdown is on the field, which is really, really amazing. So you can basically free Really, if you just summon, but the thing about this card is that D barrier still stops this card. So if you act, if you ha still have this card on the field, and uh, you activate the fusion spell, your opponent activates D barrier and call fusion. They can still activate it because it's uh, not negating. On the summon, and also the monster is not yet on the field. Uh, like because the secondary effect says that your opponent cards and effects cannot be activated when a monster is fusion summoned this way. So the monster basically has to be fusion summoned first. Uh, so uh, once you activate the fusion spell, your opponent calls uh, uh, what's it called fusion uh, off dimensional barrier. The monster isn't technically fusion summoned yet because the monster did not come out yet. Uh, which uh, the secondary effect basically prevents his cards like you know trench or tribute, bottomless trap hole, and floodgate. Uh, Flood your trap holes and things like that. So dimensional barrier will still work because the monster isn't technically fusion summoned yet. The monster is gonna be fusion summoned, but it's not on the field uh, for it to require to uh, like it's not on the field, uh, so it doesn't basically fit the requirement of magical meltdown. So uh, yeah, so the monster basically has to be on the field first. So cards like you know uh, trap holes will not work, but D barrier it, it it still will work. So and that's uh, this is gonna be really uh, you know weird, but uh, double invocation. A lot of you guys are probably wondering, Sam, why don't you play three invocation? This is the fusion spell, and if you guys don't know what invocation. That invocation basically recycle itself back into the deck every single turn. So playing multiple copies of invocation, especially three of, can sometimes brick. Uh, but the reason why I play two copies is because this card basically recycles itself into the deck every single turn and. Um, 
and also adds uh, the Alistair to your hand as well. If you guys don't know what uh, Invocation does, is that uh, so you just summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand as a fusion materials. If summon, uh, if if summoning an, an invoked fusion monster this way, you can also banish monsters from the field and or either player's graveyard as fusion materials. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one of your banished Alistair the Invoker. Uh, so of course, Alistair will be banished at this point. If this card is in the graveyard, you can target Alistair, return it, uh, return it to your hand, and uh, return uh, Invocation back to the deck. So anyways, so you basically return. Invocation to the deck, add Alistair to hand, normal summon Alistair, basically add the invocation again, and you just basically repeat this every single turn. So you're basically shuffling this card back into your deck every single turn. So there's no reason to play triple copies in the deck, in my personal opinion. And for consistent reasons, I believe that two copies is definitely the right number uh, to play uh, in this deck. You also got triple magical meltdowns, with it, which is essentially triple invocation because it searches out your Alistair, and Alistair can search out the invocation. And um, yeah, so that's why this card is really, really good. And the really good thing about this card is that. Uh, you know, if your opponent has a graveyard full of lights, especially cards like, uh, you know, in, in today's meta, such as Fairy Tail Snow, card is very, very good against Fairy Tail Snow because once they activate Invocation and they don't change Fairy Tail Snow, you can ba basically banish their Fairy Tail and uh, banish your Alistair, uh, of course, especially summon uh, the Macabre, and then they have a, and you have a basically a uh, ultimate Providence monster on the field, which is really, really amazing. Uh, so the card basically banish any uh, any cards from your opponent's grave, uh, you know, uh, against the Zodiac uh, matchup. You banish the rats, they basically just lose the game, they can't play the game, they need three rats to play so invocation is just really really good uh, uh against that matchup that basically utilize cards in the grave really good against infernoids too infernoids too if you guys played the fire uh fusion which is really really awesome so invocation is really really good card banishes uh, card in your opponent's graveyard essentially a dd crow kinda which is really really amazing so uh and it also recycle itself and also recycles alistair from your banished pouch in your hand uh which is really amazing so that's why i only play two copies in invocation because every single turn it just replenishes itself with alistair uh back into your hand and also back putting this card back into your deck so Invocation is really amazing. Now this card is really amazing as well. Triple Wonder One. Holy moly, guys! Most of your uh, most of your monsters are spellcasters anyway. You also got Alistair, which is spellcaster. You normal summon Alistair, search your fusion spell, activate Wonder Bond, uh, tribute off the Alistair, draw two cards. Really, really powerful. Uh, Ice Bell is also a. Um, uh, what's it called? It's also a spellcaster. Uh, uh, Glass Bell is a spellcaster. And uh, Winter Bell is a spellcaster. So if you ever find yourself needing to tribute these cards to activate Wonder Wand, you guys can. Uh, those are options and targets for Wonder Wand. But most of the time, you're actually going to be, you know, uh, sacking off uh, Alistair the Invoker with Wonder Wand to draw two cards anyways. So Alistair just, uh, so Wonder Wand is just a really amazing card to basically help you dig through your deck for all your uh, combo pieces and trap cards and things like that. Off to other spells, Double Cosmic Cyclones. A lot of people are going to be running, into, uh, running this deck, especially with the Artifact deck engine so cause the cyclone is really good against that because uh the artifact will not get destroyed it'll be banished so you can actually cause a cyclone banish the uh, sanctums if you're lucky uh, and of course banish cards like scythe which is really really amazing so cause the cyclone is really really good and uh next uh last but not least we're gonna play triple terror forming searches up your uh your magical meltdown and last but not least one regeki uh to round off our um are basically our spell lineup. Let's go out to our traps. We are playing kind of heavy trap because this deck is kind of like an uh, anti-metal stun deck. Uh, so let's go out to our traps real quick. For our traps, we're gonna play one Vanny's Emptiness. Really good, especially going to Macabre Vanny's Emptiness. That's like GG, man. It's it's insane. So Vanny's Emptiness is really powerful. Uh, triple dimensional barrier, really amazing, especially against the Zodiac uh, matchup. Going first, this deck has a really good matchup against the Zodiac uh, match, which is really amazing. So D barrier is really great. Uh, double Solemn Strike, um, triple Artifact Sanctum, really really powerful. So Especially against cards like Twin Twister as well. If they, twin, if they blind Twin Twister you, you're pretty much going to gain so much advantage, popping more cards on the field, going to Scythe as well. Really, really awesome. So, Triple Artifact, Sanctum. And last but not least, I like playing Double Call of Haunted in this deck because I do play the Artifact Tension. I basically want to reoccur my fusion monsters. So, basically, if Makaba gets Kaiju, you can actually call the Haunted to revive back Makaba, uh, which is really amazing. And uh, if you basically. Uh, fusion summon Makaba using artifacts and you can basically revive uh, your artifacts back with Hollow Haunted which is really amazing and the versatility of this card in this deck is just really phenomenal and you also can revive back Crystal Wing uh, which is really amazing as well so Hollow Haunted just has multiple uses in this deck this is pretty much it for the trap lineup really really strong trap lineup right here you got a triple D barrier you got vanities uh, it's, the trap lineup is very very powerful uh, if you guys want to say so that's pretty much for the trap go out to your um, uh, what's it called? Your Psydeck real quick. Psydeck is always up to personal preference, but it's what I play so far. It's Triple Lance here for the Inferno matchup. Basically, the D barrier against Inferno, which is really strong. Double DD Crow uh, for the Mirror match as well. Uh, hitting the Invocation is really important. Vanishing their uh, Invocation. Uh, it's really good. It's also really good against the Metal Full Fusion as well, and really good against the... Uh, uh, what's it called? The Zodiac matchup. Double Dark Hole, really amazing. Clear cards like Vanity's Fiend, which is really awesome. Double Forbidden uh, 
Chalice, really amazing as well. Uh, triple Antisol Fragrance going first. Uh, you go Antisol Fragrance, make Macaba. Oh man, it's, it's so, so good. Uh, one Cosmic Cyclone, the third one. One Twin and one Dimension Ground to round off our side deck. As I before, guys, side deck is always up to personal preference, but you guys can play whatever you guys want. I love to showcase you guys on what, like, you know, on, to have an idea of what you guys can play on your own side deck. Anyway, guys, let's go off to your extra deck real quick. Triple Macaba. You guys are probably wondering, Sam, why do you play Triple Macaba? And to be honest, guys, you, you're going to go into three. I'm telling you guys right now, with the Triple Artifact Engine and you got know, cards like Fairy Tail Snow uh, against the Informer matchup, you're going to be going to three Macaba. This card is the best fusion monster in the deck uh, because uh, it's, it's an ultimate providence and the really good thing is that it does not ban it does not destroy Okay, it banishes and it, the, the, the card does not target. So if, uh, let's say you got a Macabre on the field and Kieran tries to activate effect, you, uh, you can basically, um, Activate Macabo's effect, send a monster to the grave, banish the Kirin. Like, you know what I mean? It's just so, so good. The fact that it doesn't banish makes this card very, very powerful. And the fact that it just, it banishes, not, not destroyed, is really good because cards like My Body is Shield, which a lot of people are citing, will be completely useless against Macabo, uh, which is really amazing. Uh, it's 2500 beat stick with uh, Alistair in hand, makes it 3500, which is really strong. Triple Macabo is really, really good. And it's really good with the, with the artifact engine as well because artifact engines and Ghost Ogre are light, which is really great. Uh, Triple Rage In. You guys probably want to understand why Triple Rage in? Because these fusion cards are the are the fusions that you're going to be going into the most. Uh, you're playing the entire uh, Wind Witch Engine, which is all wind, so you can have easy access in, into Rage in. First turn, Crystal Wing and Rage in. So if you want Ice Ball and uh, Alistair in your first turn opening hand, you have a blessed hand, uh, which is really good because you can make Crystal Wing and a Rage in. If they summon, again, again, the Zoo matchup, if they summon the Rat, you can activate Rage in's effect to basically book the Rat right away, and then they, their turn is completely over. Uh, so Rage in is really, really good. The Book of Moon, cards like Book of Moon and things like that are really good against Zodiac matchup. So having a um during either player's turn a Book of Moon effect is just really, really amazing. So Triple Rage in is definitely uh a really good card in the deck. One uh, Invoke Elysium, really good because essentially your board wipe the deck. This card becomes every attribute. You can basically send this card to the graveyard. Uh, you know, okay. So if you guys don't know this effect, is that during the player's turn, you can target one invoked monster you control or in your graveyard, banish it, and, and all your monster your opponent controls is the same attribute as that monster. And since Invoke Elysium is every attribute, you can basically just tribute the, uh, the Elysium to banish their entire board, which is really, really amazing. So it doesn't destroy, it banishes. So cards of Starlight Ruin and uh, My Body Shield does not work. So Invoke Elysium is really, really amazing. And let's say that you also have the earth one in the graveyard which is this one uh if you have the earth one in the grave you can banish you can banish the earth in the graveyard banish all the zodiac monsters on the field which is really awesome so you don't have the tribute itself uh which is really amazing so uh in uh Invoke uh, Magellanica is the Earth type uh, with 3,000 attack and 3,300 defense, which is only a beat stick, and it's really good because you can uh, activate the fusion and banish uh, cards like uh, the Rat from your opponent's graveyard, which is really amazing. You can also cards uh, to summon this card uh, on your side of the field. You can also banish cards like your Maxis, uh, which is really, really good. So uh, Invoke uh, Magellanica is really good uh, in this deck. Really big beater. One uh, Kokaithis. Okay, guys, uh, one Kokaithis. Really good. Especially against the Paleo matchup, banishes the frogs, which is really amazing. Summon out this card, and this card is like an auto win against the uh, the frog matchup because this card cannot be targeted by opponent card effect. It's really really powerful. Uh, so Kaithis is just really amazing, and it can attack in defense. So it's like uh, it's like a super heavy samurai, which is really really amazing. And um, I remember the card. You know you know against the BA the BA format when you know when the Yangzing player summoned Yazi, and then it's basically game. Uh, it's basically like this card is like essentially game for the Paleo matchup because they basically cannot target this card, uh, and it can it can attack. In defense so cards like mirror force will not work against this card uh, which is really really amazing so one kakai this and one uh purgatrio uh the reason why i play purgatrio is because it is a fire and it's really good against the inferno matchup because you can banish cards like Unansu and also uh deviati from the grave which is really amazing and yeah and as off to your singles uh one crystal wing one clear wing and one wind witch winter bell uh these cards are really good you guys don't know what they do and uh i would play cl uh, clear wing fast dragon but it's not uh, currently out in the uh, tcg so you don't play him last one at least one by gospel emerald I find him going into him a lot, and it's only level four I play because it is a wind. Uh, you can, if you act, basically activate all your wind witches, and you're uh, able to go into the Gust of Emerald to recycle back all your resources. The card is actually pretty good. And last but not least, one wind up Arsenal's and Mayo. This card is really, really good. The reason why wind up uh, Arsenal's and Mayo is really good because I do play Call of Haunted, so you can basically revive back your artifacts and uh, make rank five plays, and especially and uh, in invoke a Ragin is a level five, so you can essentially make Zen Mayo with Ragin. What you can do is that if you have an opponent's board, let's say you uh, call a haunted back a monster. Let's say you call a haunted back. Uh, where's where's the artifact? 
Okay, so no, 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 not not call the haunted. Here, where's my artifact? So let's say you have a scythe on the field. You have Ragin. What you can do is that um, activate Ragin's effect. Uh, Book of Moon. Uh, what is it called? Book of Moon, the monster. Uh, Overlay these two into Zenmayo. Activate Zenmayo's effect. Pop the Book of Moon, and that's a really neat combo that you guys can do uh, with Ragin and Zenmayo, which is really really awesome. And it's a win. So if you act, if you use uh, your Wind Witches this turn to bring up Crystal Wing, you can essentially have access to wind up Zenmayo because it is a win uh, from your extra deck. So that's pretty cool uh, interaction with uh, Ragin and Zenmayo, and it's true because it's win so uh yeah so that's pretty much it for this deck overall guys let me know what you guys think about this deck in the comment section below i love this deck with the passion and played this, guys in this deck for quite some time a lot of you uh people that watch my stream saw me playing this deck the entire night and it's given me a wonderful success and it's just a really really powerful matchup against the the the, the zodiac matchup especially macabre is really good you do you are playing uh a heavy number of spells uh in the deck so uh if you open up macabre first turn with a bunch of traps this uh basically prevents you from getting uh, slumbered, which is really amazing. So Macabre is just a really, really powerful card uh, against the, the, you know, any spell cards, such as, you know, the Board Wipes, Regeki, Dark Hole, Slumber, and things like that. So Kaba is just really, really good because you do have a lot of spell cards and you can just negate them, which is really awesome. And negating cards like Slumber is really good because it doesn't send Slumber to the graveyard, it banishes the Slumber, so that way that they can't banish the Slumber to add a Kaiju monster from their deck for hand. So the only way that they can back actually beat Makaba is if they have a kaiju then they're gonna slumber you so yeah but you know you have traps uh face down you have so many traps you got sanctums you got d bear and things like that to basically stop the meta uh, which is really really amazing so Makaba is really great uh Ragin is just really really important as well book of moon um basically stops the uh the zodiacs uh initially uh, initial first summon uh which is really really strong so summon the rat activate Ragin, book the moon the rat they can't use that rat for the entire turn uh, so Ragin is really, really powerful. And I said before, Crystal Wing is really amazing as well. Um you know, a monster negator against the Zodiac matchup, which is really, really powerful. So you're essentially able to bring out these boss monsters, which is really amazing. And Alistair just recycles with itself with Invocation. There's so many interactions, uh, you know, with this deck, uh, with each other, with Crystal Wing, with uh, the artifact. It's, it's just insane. So anyway, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And hopefully, you guys, for those of you who did, who did not understand uh, uh, Invoke slash, yeah, Invoke slash Eidolons before, hopefully you guys got educated. I try my best to explain to you guys all my card choices as much as I can. I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna say sam these cards are basically self-explanatory we already know what it does but you guys will be surprised at how many people do not know how to play this deck and that's why i'm here for I'm trying to educate you guys on how to play this deck especially for those of you who are new and uh especially just want to pick up this deck but if, if you guys already know how, how the deck works uh that's good for you and i'm just here for those of you who do not know how to play uh this deck at all i just want to learn more information about how how the invoked arch type works and anyway, we guys uh Overall, to conclude, this deck is an anti-meta deck, really good because of Sanctum, locks your pronoun from the extra deck. This card is ultimate providence, negates basically anything, depending on the cards that you have in your hand. So, so good. Card is a, a during the player's turn, Book of Moon. Card negates the monster effects and cannot be destroyed by opponent card effects uh, once brought up with a uh, winter bell. And that's pretty much sums up for this deck profile, guys. Let me know what you guys think. And this is Sam from Team Zero Sam signing out. Uh, Alright, guys. Peace.